evening, everyone. I call the Village of Rhinebeck Planning Board for October 1st, 2024th order. The first item on the agenda is a public hearing for uh, 6342 and 6346-48 Mill Street. We have a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make that motion. We have a second? Second, Chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm make a short presentation. Chair, I'm going to myself. No, no, no. Leave. Well, let's go to the audience. Okay, he does. Yeah, he's supposed to have a sitting quietly in the audience. Okay. Hi. Sit quietly. My name is Nilsef Alice. I'm here representing the Garden Building and the Millennial Properties. The existing parcel, basically, our application is to subdivide it. In 2013, it was, we applied to have the Consolidating, and we would like to subdivide them back to their original um, uh, division. Um, I'd like to ask um, a, a long time ago, we board um, approved a multifamily housing project for the main building. Yeah. Whatever happened with that? Is that totally? off the table or is it coming back? I think there's still some, I, I think that that particular iteration of the project is off the table. I think there's still some, you know, interest and desire in doing something with that property, but um, currently there's no, there's no okay. for it. Not being in the works. Okay. I just want to make sure before we subdivide it. Right. There's not something hidden in the wings. <laughs> she was cutting off the south portion that was cut off some years ago and now put that put together. You want to pick it apart and get the same way you want. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So if you see the um, the property line uh, drawn down kind of the middle of that of the site plan, uh, that's the proposed division. So from the south side, the south lot it's right along the road. It goes up the hill to the lake. Anybody here from the public to make any comments on this subdivision? We did, um, Chair, we did have a letter from, um, yes, we'll, we'll put it on the screen. The owner at 6 South. This six is south. from um, Harry O'Leary. Letter of support. We have no objection. I think it's a good idea. Any other comments from the public? Okay. Motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that. Close in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 Okay. How does the board feel about putting Humpty Dumpty, well, take, um, undoing Humpty Dumpty, back to the way it was? <laughs> Just for the record, how big is the smaller lot? Under a third of an acre. Okay. Wait till you know it. So it's well over what's required for minimum lot. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything one way or the other about this. Okay. I have a motion to approve the subdivision for I'll second it, John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Doesn't wait. Water. Good luck. Um, how many copies of the drawing did I get We're going to need, well, um, let's do three. So one has to be signed by him, unless one of the three you want to do with Mylar in the county. Okay. So one has to be signed by him, another has to be signed by him, one stays, and two go with you. Okay. So let's do three, and uh, in those three, let's do Mylar. Okay. In those three. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Good luck. We'll come back. Next item on the agenda is 6 Mulberry Street, another subdivision. Juan Fugus and David has written up. Uh, He's outside. I'm sure he was already in the chat this year. Okay. Thank you. 
You guys get a chance to look this over. Pull up the actual subdivision. Yep. Um, okay. Same time. We should look at that before we. Did you get to read this, Victoria? Uh, yes, I did read it. I was just talking to your attorney in the hallway. I know. We have some. Um, do you mind if I just hand them my Go for comments? It. Yes, one double sided. So, um, on page one, we just updated the date and name of the plat to reflect um, the newest version. So, that just says uh, the last one day was September 20th, 2024, entitled for new plat. And then, in the condition, um, we just had a few comments on the way the conditions were laid out. Um, we start with number five. To go backwards. Um, I was concerned that as drafted, it gives too much discretion to the building inspector to decide if a performance bond is needed. So I reworded it to say if the planning board requires one, we need to do steps. Um, the other issue we're having is item three approval by the planning board of the site plan for adaptive reuse of, of the Falcon Schoolhouse. And this is just preliminary. We have to come back to final, and I was just concerned that if we couldn't, that we couldn't come back for final until we had a final approved site plan, but the site plan, I'm sure, is going to be conditioned on the subdivision, and I don't want to twist us into a knot. Um, we can sort out the order of approvals before final subdivision. Okay? That would be my suggestion, but I mean, Mr. Gordon, goes to the Yeah, this is, um, there's a little bit of, and I don't mean, there's a little over wiring on all sides here. Um, so we, the board should decide which way it wants to go. When we did, um, the, when the board did the, um, the demolition permit, we conditioned it on getting site plans. Because we don't want them demolishing anything before they get the site plan. And so here, the, uh, I was interested in the same logic. And it may be because it's preliminary, we may not need it. Um, we don't want a subdivision to happen here unless there is a site plan approval. Basically, we don't want this, we don't want this subdivided and then like a regular subdivision. We want this building um, uh, renovated and reused. So therefore, and really the the fact that we front loaded first the um, uh, first the demolition permit and then the subdivision was almost a conceptual thing. It was something that and, and the applicant wanted. That make sure that you had a certain agreement in place to subdivide a particular site. We spend quite a bit of time on subdivision before we move forward to design the actual uh, renovation project. And so it was more conceptual than anything. Ultimately, the, the best legal thing would have been to do, to do all the work up front and then do all the approvals at the same time. And in fact, you could have even, theoretically could have even done it one resolution, perhaps. But we decided to conceptually get some things out of the way first so we just could give ourselves some water here. So it was more of a governance thing. So I wanted to carry that same concept down, but there's a number of moving pieces, and so we can decide almost any way here, because as, as Victoria said, this is preliminary, so they can't file it. That also means one of the objections that she had to was probably not correct, which is that once you get subdivision approval, you have a certain amount of time it's before final have to, report, have to report it, but that applies to a final plat. You're not going to get a subdivision. It should have yeah. said final plat needs to be filed within six months. Once right. you get preliminary, yeah. so come back. The point is, the the, there's a bunch of ways around this. Um, but so the question, and one of which is just to not to have sort of, we, you already passed a resolution asking for this. You passed a motion last month, or a couple of weeks ago, asking for this resolution. We can actually just put this off until the end, even though it's preliminary. But if you want to pass it, we can go either way on this. But the point is, the message is that everything gets done at once. That you, we don't get, we're not, you don't want a subdivision happening while we're still considering site plan approval. So technically, if we were to approve this tonight or at the next meeting, they could sell lot one next no. week. No. Except that construction. Yeah, is, that's why it's preliminary. Except that if we approve this. Yeah, but even if you approve this, all that gives us the right to do is come back within six months with a final plan. That needs to be a good right. for it. And that's why I said, so we have two lawyers essentially being very careful on each of our sides. And 
ultimate, the ultimate resolution is that it doesn't matter that much because it's preliminary. So, the, you know, they can't get it approved. The concept would be, though, that nothing gets approved until, until the final. And this, but the other thing is, this is just really a signal to the applicant that they can start designing the, pro the, the renovation project with a certain set of lines that actually took a fair amount of time to figure out. So whichever we, whichever way we want to come down on the language, it, it's not going to really affect it that much because it's preliminary. Right. We can't. They can't file with the county. They can't sell lots. This is really just for purposes of. And so my goal in suggesting was to make to, was to enforce the idea that nothing nothing's agreed till everything's agreed at the end. We're not we're not going to have any we're not going to have any uh, you know uh, demolition. We're not going to have any um, subdivision until we've got a site plan that we've agreed on with the applicant. It's right. going to be a preliminary concept. But it's just preliminary, so we can go either way on it, depending on how the board wants to go. I just don't want to mess up the order of approvals because I think if we get closer to the site plan once you guys review it. Things have to be filed and done in a particular order, but you know, you but and I can. Victoria is also that. concerned that she that she wanted an actual subdivision approval before the actual site plan approval, because you're only doing the site concept plan was you're on only approving the site plan on one of the parcels. Right. It's another lawyer's point that if you if, if, if that it didn't happen that way, you know, the, the walls wouldn't cave in. It's, 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 it's a. It's no, a it's it seems to me that. The, uh, the way it's phrased, it says the following conditions shall be satisfied prior to the applicant submitting a final plan. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a problem leaving three in because it refers to the final plan. What? Yeah, and also in the in the code, it does say that conditions should be attached or could be attached to the preliminary plan that need to be satisfied before the final plan is recorded. And, and that and, and that is what that, that's the logic I was using. But again, we can you know. It, we can go either way on any of this. It's just we're sending out um, signals as to what is necessary, and the truth is, it's all necessary and all good. Okay. In fact, at the end, we can do we can do final subdivision approval and the final site plan approval on the same evening, and consecutive resolutions are probably even the same resolution. We don't object to the language three so long as this board wouldn't prevent us from coming back with the final plat while the site plan is under consideration, because I think they would need to be reviewed at the same time. Certainly, at the same certain, there wouldn't be any. I, I don't think there'd be any reason to, to hold final subdivision after a site plan. But again, it's six one that doesn't. Well, the whole thing goes into the logistics, though, because we talk about the lot three as a separate thing and the other lots around it, right? So, and that's where they're at on the site, but they want that's why they want lot three to be created before final issuance of site plan approval, right? So, as drafted, does that screw them up in that quest? Sorry, no. Well, it does, normally, the way I would normally lay it out, like, and again, this is just preliminary, so you can go with the language, but you, it would be a condition of your site plan approval that you file the flat so that the lot is created and then your site plan gets signed. You know, just to, there's a way to tie things together at the end. So, but it's, well, we wouldn't approve the final flat before the site plan. Okay. So then, or that would be so a final flat question, not a preliminary flat question. So plan. that would be one. You want to do preliminary, preliminary subdivision, then site plan, then final flat? Or do them concurrently at the end, is why I'm saying. Okay. Once all the decisions are made, you have to make both. That, that's actually the, the best plan. way to enforce yeah. the idea yeah, that it all comes together. That's correct. Right. Right. Is there any implication on Dutch's County Board of Health with that order of operation? In terms of me applying to septic in order for you to. No, you're going to get you're going to get you got to get septic yeah. approval before final site. That's okay. what final site plan is. That's what final subdivision is. Right. So, I mean, I assume there was no objection to the rewording of five, though. Oh, for the bond? No. Yeah. yeah, it's that's that's an old that's a thing. Okay. It's, 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 it's a construction bond, right? I mean, I wasn't sure what what you were talking about, but oh, it's a, it's just. You know what it is? It's a, it, that was just general. In drafting these, I grabbed the general condition from other um, approvals I had done, and clearly filing bonds is, is part of the general conditions of approval. Um, yeah, we just want to make it clear that it would be the planning board that identified that, and not you're not putting it off to the building department. Cause it, it needs to be. My my concern is that is, is making sure that a panel of people thinking and talking about the appropriateness of a bond is happening. 
not an individual building inspector deciding that he or she may want to bond. Well, they don't have discretion to make that decision. Really. But that the way it's written. In the village's um, standard procedure, who determines the size of you know, bonds for performance bonds, construction bonds, that sort of thing, on uh, subdivision or site plan approvals? Does this board do it? Does the CEO do it? Does, uh, in some cases, actually, the village board would. But, um, or try to be informed, um, uh, except the rest of the village. It comes with, with a motion from the planning board. What? Yeah, we, we make the motion to accept the bond. It's recommended by the building department. Yes, right. Board yes. of Engineers are now. Yeah. We go, we go. I didn't hear the whole thing, so I heard different things. Is it this board or is it the CEO? This board. This board. This board okay. We have the motion from yes. the code portion office for the actual number. Okay, but it just, it's set by this board. So we, are, so we were aware of this. So it's recommended by the engineer, I guess we could say, or code enforcement officer, and form, substance, manner approved by the village board. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So are you guys ready to be campaigned about site plan in the near future? So they wanted, the reason we're not talking about it tonight is because there was a lot of input the last few meetings on, you know, what should be in the site plan, what shouldn't. And so now that the lines are going to be finalized, they want to go back and actually give you a robust site plan. Put right. in the landscaping, do the lighting, a lot of that was based on your things back. And a plan was submitted, I, we submitted a plan a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, that represented what we distilled from the conversation of last week. For the subdivision For the subdivision plan, for the subdivision plan, cool. preliminary. But not, so now, whatever site plan that they gave you preliminarily, we're just going to disregard. We're going to go back and give you something that you can really bring your teeth into. On site plan. Yeah. So do we want to rewrite this? Are we happy with making the changes that we just agreed upon? Or we could approve this as amended? Or do you want to make up a fresh copy and approve it next time? Well, we can, um, whichever way the board wants to go, we can certainly... Uh, you know, amend only it. one change. It seems as we go. I just want to be certain that we have the wording of uh, number. Um, it's number five. No, yeah. number five. You've re you you rewritten. We're okay with it. It's number okay. three. Uh, we're we're fine leaving three as is, with the understanding that we're going to review them concurrently. Perfect. So three is going to stay. Like for five. And five is and five will be uh, five will be rewritten as Victoria um, drafted. And the three is going to stay as, as, as I ejected it. So do you, um, do you want to make a motion to approve the preliminary Before of subdivisions? The most important thing is that the board is complete and clear what the plat of the subdivision is. That's and why I wanted to pull the plat out. A lot of times talking about it, and as David said, they submitted a new one. So Everybody, when we vote, everybody's got to be completely clear on what the subdivision is. Okay. We had a number of motions, we had some amendments, and then there was, you know. Can you scroll down the date on that one, 920? Yeah, we got it. Yes, okay, that's the correct one. Well, there's, a, there's an error on it, I think. Um, on lot four, the dimension along Mulberry Street is listed at 78. I think it's just a, somebody grabbed it from somewhere else. Oh, right on the it. table? On the table. On the table, on the dimension of lot four, right here. Over here. Go this way a little bit. You have it at 78. It should be something close to 64, 65. I think the 78 came from lot one and two, and somebody dragged it down and put the same number on. Is it right on the larger? Oh, not this one doesn't have to be. <laughs> that lot has always been between 64 and 65 but before, and now it's 78, which it can't be right because the building hasn't changed in its location. So I, I had an older version that shows it as 64 point, 64, 8 and a quarter, 
with, with the same setbacks on lot three. Um, while Dan is looking that up, I will note that he evened out one and two. Yeah. As requested. And you have to zoom in to see that the lot two line at the Brogan Center has been moved up. And level that. It's, you have to blow out to see that that top was moved in. And level that. Let's um, see, I think there's another. Seen two uh, from you. This is the other one. It, so, John, that dimension is is sixty four point six four five. Yeah. Sixty four point. Sorry, seven four five. So, I can yeah, there, revise that yeah. right now and email it. Leave it as the September twentieth date. I can revise it right now on the drawing. As long as it's correct, email it. I think it's fine. we could just make it a condition, too, that the dimension of lot four be corrected. So that it's part of Because we've already identified this. So we would say that. <laughs> Wait, just on page one. Yeah. Today's date. That's fine. I mean, I can modify it. We send it tonight. And then we'll just change so we're we'll we'll the to kick in the plat, and then we're going to put it as a condition that it's just oh, so it. it. uh, Make it on October 1st date, and I'll send it tonight. Uh, it's no. marginally kosher. <laughs> I mean, if, if, we, if, we, if we desperately needed it, I'd say, sure, but why don't we correct the plat and get, us a, get ourselves a document and prove it? Why don't we just make it a condition, and then we change it? Because we're not planning on coming back. In two weeks, we won't be ready with the site plan. And I'd like to. To the board, you'd be, you'd be approving a plat with a condition that the plat be correct. And what's it? Just, what, just that the what's dimension be corrected. Oh, it, oh, so the drawing is the correct. The drawing's correct. The drawing's correct. It just one dimension was copied from somewhere else and yeah. placed there and not correct. Exactly what John said. Yeah. So what's better procedurally? Even just change it to October first and change the resolution and tap the new plan or make it a condition number. Six that they change that dimension. Well, what I, I don't know if the alternative one one alternative is to do as as was suggested and take the flat and just put the condition to correct the number. Mm -hmm. The other one would be nothing dated October first is today, so that we you know, to me the only alternative would be to ask them to draw up a corrected flat and approve that at whatever point we get it and decide to approve it. So I, I'm not sure how it. Well, David just drew it. He's going to email to Ryan the second of today's I mean, meeting. In about five minutes, I'll be done. Thank you. I'm okay with that. Okay. We, we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll change the date I would, on I would, I would, I would ask that yeah, it's necessary, in my view, for the board to act each board member to see it and, and we'll vote on it. That's, I mean, we, we, we could work on the resolution only one. Ultimately, what you're proving, the most important thing, is that plaque. That's what's going to be filed ultimately. Of course, you know, that's the thing. So if you want to take five minutes and have them. Send it to Jeff and put it up. I just don't love the idea of like a condition that refers to a dimension on the plan that you have to go find the plan and see if the dimension has changed. To All right. Right on. So change the date on page one. Right. Mm -hmm. And change the date on the plat. Pull it up. We can look at that you changed it directly. I'm just changing the date now. I'll attach it to an email and send. I'm just thinking a year from now, six months from now, it's going to be messy. Yeah. It's just for the year. Yeah. Right. What do you come back with the final? Be sure that you send it what's to not, what's in Ryan. I'm but if you also send it to me, I can bring it over right now. But Ryan will maintain the official copy. I'll send it to Ryan as well. Yeah, let's revise our talks. Let's revise our talks. That's right. I gave you two and you want to provide that with you.
to be true of Sure. I mean, I don't want to keep everyone waiting while my computer buffers. But Victoria's next in this suggesting maybe we move to her next yeah. matter while we're yeah. else. Okay. I don't have your email there. Okay. Thank you, voted on that. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Well, maybe it's coming. Can you bring up the next one? Uh, sure. Okay. So the next item, while we hold this in advance, uh, is 63A4 Mill Street, uh, a minor change to the amendment site plan because of the uh, lights. Right. So at the last meeting, um, the applicant had applied for an amendment to modify the lights at the rear of the property so that they matched what you approved at the front of the property. And the cut sheet was unclear. We couldn't tell if it was glass or no glass. Uh, so at the time you approved it with the condition that they put glass in. Um, so then I called the engineer the next day and he said, no, the specs are actually no glass. And that's what was ordered for the front of the property. It's the same fixture that is currently at the Dutchess County Historical Society. I have photos of it up on the screen. It's sort of a modern carriage house light. Um, the Landowner is requesting that you approve the, that version for the remainder of the lot because the whole purpose of the project was to have the lampposts match. Otherwise, he said he might not even change them. So, um, you know, I asked about maintenance, and he said that these are actually he finds them easier to maintain than the glass because you don't have to get the bugs; they don't get caught in there. They can just stick something through without taking the glass out. I mean, I didn't see, when you look in the photo, I don't see anything in there. But, I, you know, we could talk about different pictures on future projects, but here the ideal is to match the, the ones in front. And I didn't have the information from the cut sheet. If it works in rain, spider webs, yellow jacket. Guys, you're welcome to talk there. Go check it out. No, I, that's, I mean, I still want you guys to have the problem of these things shorting out or whatever, but filling with snow. For me, it was more an aesthetic thing. I was the one that brought it up. So, you know, I, I'm fine with them because you own them and we've approved them elsewhere on the site. But I just encourage the board members to look at them like in a rainstorm or at night at the Historic Society or at Vassar College. And the thing that I was objecting to is that when there's water droplets on them or there's spider webs in there, mm -hmm. it, it's like a dead giveaway that there isn't any glass and it becomes this sparkly sort of undercarriage below them up in the top. Um, so like during the day they pull off, they pull it off, but as they age, I don't think they pull it off as well. So that was why I raised the point. But I'm I don't want to stay sure after that. I think future. yeah for future yeah. that's a so future item. Are we okay with this? I'm okay with it. Yeah, they're already ordered in, in I think we're they're ordered for the front, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I guess we have to Make a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion. Yeah. The light fixtures. So it's six, 63, Mill Street. Yeah. I'll, make make the, I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. I'll stay with the light. Send. Send. Okay. You guys should receive. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that on that end.
to approve the preliminary conditional <laughs> subdivision, uh, 6 Mulberry Street. Make any conditions on the conditional approval? I set forth in the resolution. We just have to ask for So Fine. we're changing the date to October 1st. We are keeping uh, condition number three. We're going to use Victoria's condition as well. Right. And but again, guys, I want you to look at the plat and make sure you have it. Have we changed the date on over the first? Yes. Anyway, so I'm going to make a motion. I'll right, just make the motion. Thank you. Okay, I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? All right. I want to do it. Now. Just say one thing. Okay, okay, okay. Because I'm going to vote no, and I wanted to give the reasons because I don't, we don't normally have, typically have split votes. But, you know, I was felt pretty strongly about this as people saw from the last meeting, and I just wanted to list five reasons why I think it's the wrong decision. I think uh, historically, larger scale institutional buildings have larger setbacks with more space for landscaping areas up front than what's being proposed. Uh, the proposed side yard is too narrow to give an adequate view of the south side of the school building, which is part of the historic structure. Number three, a wider approach would have highlighted the historic entrance location on the south side of the building facing Mulberry Street, which would be consistent with the uh, Bulkley School overlay um, requirement for front entrances. Number four, a wider landscape area would avoid lot four having an overly short 65 foot lot depth at the corner and having the apartment windows look directly down on the house. And number five, the smaller single family lot size would help avoid overly large houses from being proposed on these new parcels. So for those reasons, I don't know. So all those in favor? Yeah. All those against? I'm, I'm also no. For the first two votes, John, John and I were no, and the other three were yes, so it's kind of a formality, I think. So the motion carries three to two. Okay, thank you. It's a smoky box. Don't think I'm done. David, I assume you want me to stay for that? Um, yeah, we're going to ask you to stay up to the So, yeah. Have you seen any of this, David? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I'm aware of the general issue and uh, I was I was actually here last last uh, a couple of weeks ago as well when we talked about it. And so we determined first of all I was involved in helping CPOs determine that um, that this was consistent with the existing zoning, which is a little bit um, it's, that's that's a determination that not everybody is has internalized. Um, and uh, then is where the board, the board had uncovered the conversation with Natalie that, um, that there were certain zoning um, bulk requirements that were not met, starting with parking, and we made another setbacks as well that we considered that. So I'm not to on that. It may be happening since. Uh, oh, I've been talking to Ryan several times in the past two weeks. He's done all the research he could find. And all the way back to Zendorf, this thing was approved with 15 parking spots, which was insufficient. Was under a different code. Um, when you say this thing, you're talking about the restaurant, right? The this parking. At the restaurant. The, the parking for, for the, the restaurant. restaurant. Yes. Right. And so it, it's not it's not quite clear how we go forward. There was a present 
it was if they weren't doing anything, then they could pick the number with the 15 parking spots that were granted eight, ten years ago, but that before the code change. Now, um, we have to do it without a uh, number of parking spots for indoor and outdoor dining. We have uh, rules about part in lieu of fee must be half real spots and half you know, fake spots. And, um, and so, where, where do we stick? Because now they're touching this. And what do you mean, what do you mean they're touching? They're, they're changing the plan for Smoky Rock by adding these four apartments to the site. Right. Does that trigger now you're under the new law? Yeah, the oh, whatever, they, whatever they're proposing now has to be compliant with the existing code. So that's, so that's what you're asking. Yeah. That determination should be made by the CEO. And when I was working with them, they were just looking at the general use issue. They, the proposal, at least that's what I was uh, going on and discussed with them, the, the, you know, the issue of uh, originally um, the, the, the representation was that these are apartments, which they are not under the code. but looking at it, it looked like it was multi-family. And so th those sorts of determinations are the ones that I was aware of and involved in. The question as to the you know, vault, the parking, things like that, it's, uh, it's a problem and we probably need the CEO to weigh in. We've also got to weigh it on, on whether it's appropriate at this point to, um, even for them to propose uh, purchasing, uh, whether the term is in the cult, to pay in lieu of providing parking. Mr. Gordon, it, I was actually looking at that section of the in lieu fee that actually gives the power to the planning board to determine the minimum parking requirement rather than the CEO. If you're looking at um, section five, right within the parking section, let, five, me, pull, let me pull it up. It's B within there. It says the fee in lieu of providing parking spaces shall only be implemented um, when all other reasonable options. Oh, sorry. A, the fee and loan providing parking spaces shall be based on the minimum number of spaces shown on the off-street parking chart table three after subtracting the number of spaces that the applicant actually provides. Sorry, it was B that states the planning board. Um, now, the what section are you reading from? This is the off-street parking, so 120-16, then going down to five, where you're talking about the, where the code is talking about the in-loop fee. And I, I will just say the applicant, uh, to Ryan's point, I've been in conversation with Ryan as well, um, even though the restaurants have been approved and functioning with 15 parking spaces for the last three iterations, right, uh, Zen Dog and then the Jazz Club and then Smoky Rock for the last 10 years, the applicant is willing to look at the full parking requirement for multifamily, right, which is two spaces per unit. So if, if you could go back to that email you had up, I think you had the count up there. Um, so the two per, per multifamily unit, right, which is the eight spaces, plus 21 spaces for the restaurant, which is one space for each four indoor seats and one space for each eight outdoor seats, requiring 29 spaces. So they're still willing to start, so start all over. And what we have now is 15? And what oh. we have now is 15. Correct. But we're going to take, we're going to lose some of them because the apartments are going on top of it. But you're still ending up with 15 spaces. It's a net of. Is it? it yeah, there's no, there's zero net, but it's 15 spaces. But it's not parking space for the restaurant. It's inside the garages. Of there the will apartments. still be 11 spaces for the restaurant and so four from, for the units. No, but you're going from 11, 15 down to 11 yeah. for the restaurant. Correct. Correct. And you need 29 for the restaurant? No, 29 altogether for all pieces together. So 29 for, for the, resi the proposed residential and the restaurant. And then 15 total being provided for each one is dedicated to the residential units, right, in the garages, plus 11 for the restaurant. So we'd be seeking a waiver of 14 total spaces for the site. But your, your point's a good one. The restaurant requires 21, and will technically be allocated 11. <clears throat> but they have been operating, right? So when they got their original approval, and I, I know the codes changed and the parking requirements changed, right? But when they came in in 2014, and they had those 15 spaces. They were actually approved for, at that time, the site plan, or the, the CO or the document that is signed by the building inspector considered, I just want to make sure I have the numbers right so I'm not misquoting, considered um, 90 indoor seats and 125 outdoor seats, right? It was like really packed in there. 
Um, in 2020, they reduced that quite a bit. Their indoor seats, they reduced to 82 and outdoor seats to 48. Uh, and then they've actually reduced that even further in 2022 um, because they built a bakery where there was a banquet room. There's like now a bakery, bakery kitchen facility inside. So they took away seating for that space. Um, and then also just because of staffing, they've reduced the number of people they're seating outside and inside just because they don't have the wait staff to necessarily keep up with those higher numbers. So they have been functioning with these 15 spaces. We're approved for these 15 spaces at a, at a much higher occupancy, right? Um, and have been, they think, functioning successfully for the last <coughs> 10 years with those 15 spaces, noting that a lot of their customers are walking in from, from different uses, right? Different uses um, in the downtown, whether they be Beekman Arms or the or Mirabeau Spa, or just residents who live there walking uh, to the downtown. So they haven't necessarily, they haven't felt that the 15 has been an issue uh, for the functioning of their restaurant. Let me let me make a suggestion. To um, this is helpful, but uh, I want to take a step back. And if the board is looking for it, maybe not. But if the board is looking for it. I'd like to suggest a, a framework to work all through this, which may be obvious. What what we're doing here is functionally an amended site plan, okay? And the amended site plan is going to be amended and reviewed and approved, if it's approved, under the existing code. And if there are changes in the restaurant, that, that can all be factored into the analysis. So what we're looking at is an amended site plan to go from what they have now, which is a restaurant, to what they want to have, which is a restaurant and a, a multifamily building in the back, and so all the analysis in terms of their, the, square, the tables of the square footage in the restaurant, the number of parking spaces that they have, the number of parking spaces that they need and pay for, should be looked at within the framework of an amended site plan. So that is in any way helpful. And that should be the framework for the entire discussion in terms of what they have, what they need. And I think those were the two questions we were looking to have answered. Right under that framework, this is amendment to a site plan, of determining what the minimum parking requirement is, which I would say based on table three, and basically what we're putting up there is, I think there's little room for discretion about what the required parking for these two uses is. So I think that would be helpful step for us today, like deeming for the proposed use on this site with the restaurant that is there and the proposed residential, like what is the minimum required um, parking spaces. And I think from there, that then helps us to go forward to see whether or not the fee and lube is a viable option or whether or not an area variance is required, right? I think that if we can deep, determine what that minimum parking requirement is, that's helpful. And then I guess it, you noted at the top some additional um, variances that would be required, which we haven't been made aware of that I'm yet. Not, uh, no, yeah, oh, okay. is, no and, and I guess what I'm, what I'm um, is it, in terms of aerial requirements, like for instance, in this case, the number of parking spaces, does this board kind of, does it, is it typical that, that an applicant would walk in and say, this is what we want to do, tell us what we need, or is that the sort of thing the CEO does? Um, this, if, if, if this was a, a use issue, like I said, whether it's an apartment building or a multifamily, that's a, that, that, this board won't do that. The CEO has to look at use. The CEO is charged with looking at zoning issues. But once you start getting into um, number types of things, including what we did on Duchess Shepherd, this board is, it can be very, very involved in determining compliance when numbers are involved, when, when you have to you know. How big is the, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. So before we move forward, I want I want to be clear whether we're using our resources properly and whether we need the CEOs to start weighing in if this is an amended site plan, given the size of the uh, residential building they're proposing and the number of uh, We did tables. submit to the CEO. We unfortunately did not get a response to well, us directly. Usually the CEO tells us what the parking requirement is. If that's the answer, then that's what we need. And then we can adjust it by recommending variances or, or and especially paying, paying what's, the what's most important in this discussion, I think, is are there any previous variances? Because they run with the land. Well, how do we improve looked, 15 spaces now? I look, I look back. There's, there's no payment in lieu of fee? I looked in the pay parking in lieu of uh, chart that I had. There's nothing that says Smoky Rock. There's nothing that says ACVP LLC. There's nothing that says... Um, Cadigan property and X amount of space. So no payment in lieu. And 
Because it was a restaurant, a restaurant, a restaurant over the last three iterations, they so, would have had a zoning variance back in you know, if, 2001 or something. If the board wants to review right now, I found the meeting minutes from April 15, 2014, when Smoky Rock first came before the board. And it says nothing about parking. Okay. You guys never addressed it. And so that means the to only me, thing was was about seats. And you guys sent that to the CEO at that time, Mr. Fenton, and there's no record of any previous follow-up discussion from that. So it seems to me what happened is yeah. that it was a previous restaurant, and they were coming in with a new restaurant, and we deemed they had probably fewer tables or something that justified the fact that we didn't require any extra parking because it was already approved for that, and it probably was approved for that when it was the jazz club or whatever it was. Yeah. So it just goes back far enough in which that 15 spaces was adequate, deemed adequate. I will, time. I will confirm, since I walk you know, by him all the time, 15 is more than enough for the businesses that they, you know, that go in there. It is mostly walk-ins, and there's, there's almost always, always, always empty spaces within that 15 that I, I noticed. Now, I, you know, Ryan, there was some email about this subject, and um, the zoning law was changed in 2017. Was it 17? I thought it was 16 when they, you guys changed I went back to my files to see if I could find anything, and I found correspondence about public meetings on the zoning in 2017. Okay, then that's when I, so I, I thought it So I spilled into 2017. But at any rate, um, and this is relying on my memory, which is a terrible thing to do. But my memory of the parking, what we changed was, um, we did change the basic standards. What we did change is outdoor seating was now being counted in a different way. Before okay. that, outdoor seating was sort of, well, if it's not used all year, we're not going to count it towards parking. And um, the zoning. I'm learning too, John, this is before my time too. Yeah, so I think we added the provision in here about what you how you calculate outdoor parking. I seem to remember that. And the second thing is we required in the in lieu that you couldn't do it or you shouldn't do it if more than half the uh, spaces were not supplied. So now that you bring that up, John, that was a concern the code enforcement officer had with the language and the code as it states. And the other language he was concerned about is <coughs> the, all other reasonable methods are exhausted before the parking <coughs> below. That was So it. in his mind, that means should the applicant try to test or present to you guys if an area variance can work and if you would support an area variance with a positive recommendation to end up going to the ZBA. That was why he has not written a determination letter yet for this. Those were just his top comments. That's what so I would recommend. So I can speak to that for one minute, right? So the, an area variance has a similar problem to the to the five prong test, right? Which is set out by New York State law. You also have to have all other means uh, been tested rather than seeking this variance, right? That's one of the five. Yeah, for, an, for an area variance, then you can. But that's that is not a hard and fast disqualifier. But that is also, the, I'm just saying, same language, almost same exact language as what yeah. of what you guys yeah. have in your. But an area variance. Parking. You're pretty much at your discretion. I guess the point I don't understand from that of why the board would seek that rather than the applicant paying the full fee in lieu of, right, is if we go the route of the area variance and, and get that relief, which I would argue we have looked at other ways of fitting parking on this site, and because of the significant wetland buffer, right, and the limited space, we cannot provide any additional parking on this site. We've looked at reducing the number of units. The project becomes economically infeasible if we lose that fourth unit, right? So we've looked at other options on this site to try and reduce our parking requirement or increase parking supply. Um, I don't understand though, because you know I think the idea of this of the parking of the fee in lieu of is that when folks are walking around and walking into this business, they are likely parking in municipal parking somewhere, right, and walking around, and the fee goes to that municipal parking in support of that. Whereas if we seek the area variance route, the applicant is not paying the fee to support that parking. And so that seems like more of a negative impact on the village than them paying the fee for the, because we're counting the full number of spaces, right? So they'd be paying whatever the $14,000, $15,000 is. Well, if the applicant wants to do it, I'm, 
that, that makes sense yeah, to me. Yeah, I would agree with the logic, though. Unless there was a situation where you didn't have 50%, right? Then, yeah. then I would say, you well, know, then you don't need that. Also, yeah. there's a should there instead of a shall. Right. So, so it's not a hard and fast. Not a hard and fast, but if we're trying to debate where it teeters to pay the fee versus go for an area variance, I would say if, if they're like woefully inadequate, it might be so more variance territory. There is two. You are not here. And Jeff, you were not here either, but Michael, David, and John were. Just to remind the board, we don't want another Amsterdam situation. Define what that means. What that means. What that means is the Amsterdam was asked to pay a parking in lieu of fee. Right. It was a very large fee. And when they paid that, all of a sudden their agreement with that owner fell through. I still paid the money, right? I I, I would so. ask the attorney to bring in whether that is a fair consideration for this board for a totally different property owner and their inability to pay a fee when you have the property owners who exist there now, who are the client, who will remain the property owner, who have been consulted about this and are willing to pay. I don't never paid the fee. I know, but I don't they see how you can pay hold that against another property, a owner property owner to, to rent those spots. And then he refused to to rent it anymore, he wanted spots yeah. for his businesses, yeah. and then there was no mechanism for us to go back and say, hey, you owe us like $20,000 yeah, for no your There's no off-site parking arrangement in this proposal. This is the current so, business owners who right. operate the restaurant, to pay the fee before they got the wanting to build these units, they will continue to operate the restaurant. So there is no like is second there, party here. So I think you just run that with Terrapin, and then you get it right, right before I joined the board and, and have that more formally defined with the church across the street. So I think that that Amsterdam lesson was learned in a different way, right? right? Why more recently in a different way. Now, when we entered the, the um, Walker Street restaurant, wanted to, wanted to use upstairs as more restaurant and it required eight spots. And we said, you have no spots because it was like grandfathered in from uh, no spots. It was a Chinese restaurant or whatever way back in history. And so we said, you cannot expand the restaurant because you would need four real spots and four parking and room spots. And you, we can't, you can't just pay $8,000 and open the restaurant upstairs. We had to like not be able to do that because the way the code was written. Yeah, because they were not meeting that 50% uh, kind of. Because they had part. zero spots. Yeah, which is so not the case. So the way the code was written with the two, two, one for two, two for one, to the 15 spots they currently have, or amount to the half, and they could buy 14 spots. I mean, is that, or is that new spots, they'd have to buy seven and have seven. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, I feel like they would have to buy 14. Right? They and we count the old spots, of which we're losing four to the new apartments, and only having 11. I mean, the math is like, I've lost that, but if you, if you view it as, this is why I thought it might be useful, and maybe I missed this, so we can talk about it, but if you view it as an amended site plan, it doesn't really, in my view, it doesn't matter that much. Both of the uses are going to be part of the amended site plan approval if, if, if it's looking forward. So the question is, how much do they need for this restaurant and this building together on the amended site plan? How much are they proposing physically? 15. And Right, and so if they need 29, assuming they, I think no they check man, but if they need 29 for the the rest, the restaurant as it will be, and the building as it will be, and they are proposing 15 physical spots, that means they need 14 and they're just about half. Yeah. That's okay. the way I look at it. I would agree. I mean, think of it like sewer or septic, right? If you need a certain amount of gallons to accommodate your two uses together, you have to have that capacity in the system. So that takes care of the amended cycle of the bottom the now the special permit is for the four apartments. Yes, that's right. That, so we, we have two separate issues here. So the site plan modification so, could be made with the parking in lieu of fee, but we have to go to a public hearing on the So is everybody on the board okay with the 14 parking I spaces? I will go with it, but I think they've already been in existence and they're not changing anything in the, in the restaurants. I think we should be charged a fourth, not 14. That's my own personal. Well, yeah, I, 
fact, if they want to go for a variance and make that case, they can. If they're not going to go for a variance, then we have to go to the full amount. But right. the new zoning code, which was done after the last approval, incorporates an extra charge for outdoor seating, which they've accommodated in this 29 space calculation. So to me, we're justified doing the 29 if the ZEO agrees that that's the right number, and 14 pays for half. That's right. I would, my, what Mike was saying um, would go into the question of a variance. And um, that's up to them. To, so it sounds like they, they, they'd rather stay here. And so, you know, when they go for a variance, then the ZBA can decide whatever is important for the community and they can, they can change the numbers that they want. But as long as they're here, we, we're not granting variances, so we're not recognizing the, you know, this, this reduction of we'll start with the code. Right. Yeah, the only caveat to that is it would be helpful. Uh, you mentioned other variances, so if we could get a zoning determination. Right, just let me that. Okay, okay. I, I don't think there's any other that are needed because of either pre pre existing non compliant buildings or, or situations, right? Well, I was more concerned about just um, okay. making sure all the setbacks were. were, were uh, but uh, yeah, so I guess the one piece was if, if we could just get a, a zoning determination letter from the ZEO to just like review the whole thing and. If there's other variances needed and I'm going to have to go before the ZBA, then it might make sense for me to bundle them all together. I, I but if not, if this is the only one they're willing to pay. And we got, I'll work with the CEO to, to, okay. to, to finalize that, but I just want to point out to the applicant and, and to the board, this is this is an interesting project because it's fairly novel, and it's also, a, a, once they want to bring a new building in, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a constrained site. And it's going to be mixing two two uses that aren't typically mixed. And so, this board is going to have before it design it. I mean, look at the last project. We just, you know, look at Dutch Shepherd and how much we worked on those. We're combining these things together, types of issues, and are we screening everything right? Here you have an apartment building, essentially in, in the back parking lot of the restaurant. And without getting to the parking issue, this is a fundamental design issue for how we're moving forward in terms of uh, you know. Morphing, moving the downtown area into where we're going, you know, where we're going, and how and how we want it to look in terms of a number of different parameters. One, one thing that's obvious is, you know, just the, the constraints of the site physically. And the second thing that's going to be important is the seeker impact, and this is mostly going to be under seeker, the seeker impact of the um, the front facing garages, which is that's if we've heard flack based on the zoning determination. Which I think is on the, based on the letter of the law. It's the concept of the front facing garages in, in this district. And so, well, they would, but we just touched briefly on that last time. I'd like to get that down the line. That four peak roofs like that would not look like it, it, it roofs. If it looked like one building, would there be a flat roof that looked like it was an old office building that's been converted into apartments or something? Like that. I'm just pointing out. We, the yeah, eye. we will be back at the October right. 15th meeting that we have. We've done some photos from the public right away from the sidewalk, and we're going to do sims so you can kind of see how much of the building you'll be able to see from the front. And then we kind of really like the idea. We're moving forward with the idea of looking at carriage houses, which were in this position on these right. kinds of lots that do have front-facing barn door, garage doors, and trying to work within that kind of design. Um, context uh, so that that we, we're still working on that that will come back for that conversation for the so with the, with my point to the applicant was that um, I, I may have misspoken or, or, or misunderstood whether there's any um, other um, uh, setback variances or phys, you know physical variances that are necessary but there will but because of the, the dynamics of the site and the application there will be a lot of consideration for this board and the seeker that as we work with them to design something that's beneficial to them. But we have to work out, here's the 100-foot buffer. It is a DEC right letter. The back of the house. Yeah. It is, you check it out. Yeah, yeah. We have, well, we're going to have a letter of that, too. So we have a wetland specialist. So you can't push it back any more than No, the 100-foot is required. We're trying it. to look at delineation again. It has a, the do the wetland buffer delineation, so we're being well, sure we're exactly 100 feet, but that is a major concern. Because there is a, you said. could push back a little a few feet, Michael was concerned that we have, we have more yeah. cars coming around. We did find out how to fit, do 24 foot. So all that, I guess tonight we just really okay. wanted to talk about the parking and make what, sure we had What do we need at the, at the public hearing for the special use permit? Do we have to show the public what it's going to look like? Do we have yes. enough? You know, so we, we don't have enough. He said that, yet. Right. We don't yeah, have enough right. information to have a special use permit. All we can really do now is talk about 
the site plan as Do that is the parking. Do something for November, Chair? Well, what about the determination? I mean, now they ask a good question. If there's a zoning determination coming out that says there's a problem with the garages facing forward, they're going to need to go. No, no, no. We, I think no. that's, I, that's why I think the zoning determination, the use determination, is that it's okay, uh, at least as far as I understand now. My point, though, is that there have been some members of the community that have objected based on design issues, in, in particular based on you know multifamily building in this district, with front-facing garages is the sort of thing that some people have expressed some concern about. My point with the board is work, this right. will become a design issue for you under seeker. We may hear from those people in the public hearing. And so my only point was that that is something this board will deal with, even if we don't, even if the project doesn't otherwise violate setbacks or you know step, uh, things in the statute from the, from the zoning code that, that they would require variance for, the, the design issues are going to come back in terms of Seeker and the impact on the um, on the district. Okay. Wait, yeah. No, surely. So, but just to just to make sure, so we don't have a zoning determination that's coming that's going to say there's any problems that shouldn't normally be dealt with by the planning board in a site plan. We need to check to see where the CEO is with the zoning and see what they see with the movement. The, the 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 use determination has been made. I don't know to what extent they've been considering a parking determination. Well, and then the, the second thing is the parking determination, which typically comes to us from them and it's probably going to say something similar to what Natalie's numbers are. If it does, then the path appears to be the one that the board likes is we can, we can talk about the Amur one, and then it would be Natalie and her clients' decision whether they want to go fight, to Michael's point, for a few less fee parking spaces based on what was there previously. The first step, the right. first step should be... But assuming she said no to that, then we seem clear so to, to move to the next step. Aside when we have to refer this to Ken, and the special use permit can't happen until we have a public hearing and show them that it's going to look like an old used office building or a bunch of carriage houses or something that doesn't look like four buildings. Yeah, October 15th right. so we'll have summer. revised renderings and visuals and everything for you. So I think October 15th is when you could start. This, we, this we case, like so we need a complete application before we schedule a public hearing. It sounds like you'll bring a complete application in October. Yeah, yeah. we really just wanted to focus on the parking and make sure we knew what we were doing there. Just so to clarify on the parking number, okay, yeah. this number 14, this is a, a recent plan that you provided. Mm -hmm. What's this but, but this is the current plan. I see you, you added that there's 22 foot here. I think. Oh no, that's not the. We have a slightly revised one because it's okay. now 24. It 24. Been, okay. Yeah. But are these the same? Um. Because this, you know, these, and no. these would total 14. This yeah. This is not a parking space. No, that's. And what is this hash mark item here? ADA. Okay. That's an ADA. So really 14. And that upper one, again. that upper part has been changed a little bit because there's a tree and existing patio space yeah. right up against the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, right yeah. up against the restaurant. Yeah, where the other ADA striped space. So that right now is a plaza. You can kind of like, it's a okay. patio. You can kind of see it underneath. All right. So if you, then you, in other words, you're suggesting this is an ADA space and this is an ADA space. Uh, no. No, just that. Yeah, there's yeah, two layers here. It, I think this is a slightly old. If you go to the site plan from last meeting, that yeah. one's a little bit more accurate than this one. All right. But my question was this, even, you know, and we can see that this island would be, maybe it's 24, not 22, et cetera. But nonetheless, that's 14. This is 4. Yeah. That's 18. Yeah, which is not the current count because we are trying to retain some existing screening. Right. Of trees. So we lost some spaces on that upper one to preserve those. Right. It sounds like. The current, the current requirement would be 29, right? The current requirement is 29. Yeah, okay. And that would mean um, four of these 18 would be reserved for the two, 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 right? Yes, so there's a total on the site plan, there's a total of 15 spaces, four of which are within those garages reserved for the units, and 11 of which are in those two middle aisles that you're Okay, we say 15, so in other words... No, so those are only 11. Where you're pointing yeah. on the on the proposed site plan, there's only 11 total. Okay, yeah, so I think we need to see that because we're... That's, the number of if we can go back here. to last month's submission, that was the last meeting. This is slightly older than that. Yeah, the point he's making is that you could actually get 18 on the site plan. If yeah, but I think we're going to get... In, if you prioritize parking over visibility mm -hmm. and screening. Well, 
Yeah, but trees can't be planted. It's, lands can't be planted. I think we all know that they don't. When people plant new landscaping, it takes quite a while for that to come in any way that it is actually screening anything, right? And we have an existing tree, which I think you guys will start to see in the visuals. All right. We have an existing but tree that won't be like it's going to be nothing. Under code, we're supposed to make sure that we get as much marketing as possible. And so no, we, I would we say have if you go to the section of the code that talks about the intent of the parking regulations, it talks about balancing the right number of parking spaces and not encouraging too much parking. And I think losing, I think it's a conversation that we'd like to have with the board about. Yeah. And the also, the, benefit there, of there will be a trade issues as well uh, under Seeker and, and in terms of the, um, the nature of the district. So these will all be things that the board's going to have to crunch. We'll take a look at the application to see. But, uh, I think. Does Something the that was evident from this is that there is a possibility of a few more spaces if you're willing to work with the site plan and landscaping in a different way. Does the CEO have the, um, the designation that you were discussing with the 15 spaces in the proposal for 29? Yes. They've okay. got what they need to rule on. They, yeah, I would use not this site plan, I would use the last site plan that was, oh, we, we can get you another one. Right yeah, away. Do yeah. They, yeah. Do they, and maybe, then they have that whole calculation they, that I, I It would be helpful for them to have the proposal on which they have to make a rule in this case. They can use the last one that was submitted. The only thing that will, yeah, I guess if the only thing that changed is that 20 foot, foot the 24 foot oh, drive. This is almost like the last thing. Let's get a document to be clear on what. <laughs> but if they came back to me with their zoning determination said you have a 20 foot, 2 foot lane, you need a variance for that. I can easily come back with a revised site plan. So they can review the last submission, Mike, and I would love a determination on that. So do we, know what, do we have a sense for what she's referring to? Okay, so we're good. Why well, we also wanted an escrow established for David for, I don't know if we need Ty and Bob to look at this, or some point we've got the name we need them. I, mean, I, I, I don't, I don't want to know that you know, someday I had to Hurricane like storm comes through and these wind up down in Mirabu's Valley there, could be off the cliff. Uh, do we have, um, has someone done a study to make sure that the soil is good? And yeah, actually, the engineers working on this project are the same ones who worked on Mirabu, so they're very familiar. It's LRC group, uh, so they're very familiar with the soils um, and the geology. And the chair area, is referring so. to it, an engineer for the board. Though, who, to oh. But I, he was looking at me asking if we had an engineer, and so I was responding to that. No, oh, basically, so you were actually looked at it. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Are there new underground chambers to be proposed? Uh, just for the pilots, just for pilots that have to be done. Okay, because I thought, thought I saw underground chambers on the proposed site plan in the back. And that you need to like storm water? There. What's that? For storm water? Yeah. Well, let me look, I don't. I thought I did, but I looked at it quickly as that. It sounds familiar, actually, I think I saw something. Yeah, yeah which, which would be new somewhere. and which we'd be one and have re, re, uh, reviewed by our engineer. Mm -hmm. So what are you suggesting for an escrow amount, Ryan, based on? 6500 based on our current administration fee, based on the composed scale of uh, the uh, new building. Make a motion for a uh, escrow fee of 65, I think, was it? Yeah. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we've made good progress. Yeah. We'll see you in I appreciate you guys considering the parking aspect. I'll be back October 15th for more um, designs for you to look at. We want parking, I mean, additional housing in, yes. in, in, in the village. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I think it's a good conversation. We're happy to like work through the planning board with this because. The new comp plan sites the need for infill development and more housing, which is exactly what this project is. So it's maybe the first, but it's not going to be. Almost every store in the village has an apartment. But yeah. this is the first time we're building actually second apartments. Yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple there behind the liquor store that was a new apartment still. Right, and we have one behind uh, Lawrence House next to the village hall, whichever direction it is. Yeah. There's a house built behind that. And it's where most of the apartments are above the stores. Yeah. And so this is now separate apartments. So if we can make it look like something, you know, it's something that we would be uh, desirable to have in the village. Yeah. We look forward to the teacher's building as Thank you, Thank you, Natalie. Yes. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Yes. Okay. Um,
This is uh, 6363 Mill Street, both interior, exterior improvements. This is the hidden building that nobody could see behind uh, the Valera station. It's a beautiful building. Yes. I tried to take a look at it. I couldn't. Just no way to get a good look at it without mm -hmm. violating their property. Yeah. People wander in their cars, go in there, they, they run in, so they also some point they, sure. want, okay. they want a gate. <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't go there. These right. are gate going over the close. I couldn't go there. Is anyone here no, I from... Didn't, I didn't trespass. 6363 Mill Street tonight. I got confirmation from the architect who's going to be here. Uh, maybe he thought because of the public hearing it was going to be later. Uh, well, we can put them off and see if he comes to the next one. Put them off and see on to the next one. 810 Chestnut Street is the next item. We would like to uh, work on the garage. So we have Samantha Koenig, and what's, what's more your name, sir? Lee Leftwich. Lee Leftwich, yes, of course. Good to see you all again. Um, so this is really simple. Um, the garage that's standing there is in pretty rough shape. I think that's pretty easy to tell. Um, so the I ran through with uh, Ken and Justin already that he's given me the go-ahead to replace the roof, which is in really rough shape, um, and to repair the slab. So this is simply um, seeking to replace windows that currently exist in the garage that are broken, um, which there are three windows in the garage. The two that face the rear are two over twos, original, and the one that faces the street is a six over six. Um, so my hope here is to replace all three of those windows that are in rough shape with two over twos, which match half the garage and the house. Um, and the same in color and profile, et cetera. It's exactly the same with those that were on my order. Then uh, the garage door is broken. So that's the proposed new garage door, which fills the same space as the existing door. So two car garage? Yeah. Huh. Looks like one car. It's very heavily overgrown. Okay. So you're missing about four feet of the garage <laughs> covered in ivy. the material in the garage though? Uh, it, that's just a really crummy picture, I'm sorry. I, I did that so you could see what the shape it was. Um, it's a, it's not redwood, but it's a uh, high quality composite material. It's from, um, what's the, Richard's Wilcox. It's one of their better doors that's not redwood. Basically, it's their first door below wood, but it's going to get painted anyway. So it's not vinyl. It's, it's, no, no, no. It's wood composite that's yes. painted that look like wood. Yes. Well, it's, it's going to be painted to match the scheme of the house. It's not, it's not fake wood grain. And Samantha, are these three windows, are these three two over two proposed windows the same dimensions as the existing windows? You're just replacing them? They're, place. they're really, really close. Um, yes. The two windows at the back of the garage are really, they're currently behind all my flooring, so they're hard to get to. Um, but the window in the front looks like it matches dimensionally pretty much with the upstairs two over twos. So this is the tear sheet from the upstairs two over twos that we used. Okay. Yes. And they'll have exterior ones on? Yeah, it's exactly the same as what's on the house. The one, the one on the right side of the garage is the only one visible from the street. Correct. The other two are visible from the church. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's it's very clear when you're standing in the garage, and I don't know if Justin sent photos that he took. He came out to the site and I showed him the two over twos that face the church are very clearly much older than the six over six. So, I, I mean, I prefer for them all to match. I think that's more appropriate for the property. So the six over six is a later replacement. Yeah, saying? it's yeah, and it's probably my guess is somebody broke it because on the inside it's boarded up. It's kind of a mess. The building is flowered? The outside of the building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Dutch lap, which, which honestly is in pretty good shape. So my plan is to kind of 
clean it, clean all the mold off and just paint it. And the roof? Roof is in extraordinarily bad condition. I'm replacing it with a new metal. Yeah. Not, it's not the same zinc as the house. It's a complementary dark colored kind of aluminum. Uh, That'll be standing seam as well. They look very good together. Okay, paper. High quality stuff for a garage. Okay. Got them. Oh, this looks good. It does look good. Thank you. Great. Okay. Any other questions for the board? Yeah, the house is coming along nice. I'll be happy to put that fence on. You can't yeah. really go yeah. back at it. I know. We're, we're getting there. Yeah, I think it's it looks like uh, some hands are. And ensuring that some pretty good quality work's been done on there. Yeah. And all those, um, well, I, you're still working on the porch, I see. Yes, that's, I'm imminently waiting for the balance of my porch parts. Um, so this should be probably the next couple weeks. Let's start, mm -hmm. we'll start on that. So, yeah. Any other discussion on the windows and garage? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll motion approval. I'll second it. Those in favor of approving the amended, uh, not amended segments, that have a clause on the plan. Yeah. I'm approving the garage renovations at 810 Chestnut Street. Uh, Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, 6360. He's, he's on his way. I just spoke with him on the phone. He's going to probably be about 10 min min minutes so we can. Get some other stuff out of the way. Okay. Um, referrals from the building inspector. Yes. Okay, so as I'm sure the board has noticed, over on Montgomery Street, the house that seems to be under construction for forever. Um, a resident contacted the office with a concern about the work that is going on with uh, the porch, and specifically the porch roof. Um, that essentially what the owners are, are doing um, is not respectful to the historic district. So I did some digging, and realistically, the owners were never touching the roof. The owners were restoring or replicating the columns and that flashing that's above. Um, I have the minutes from last year when the contractor was here, and you guys spoke with the contractor and gave him the okay to move forward with the restoration of the columns and the flashing. Right. Just to be clear, this is Naveen and Pamela's house, right? Correct. Okay. And we approved the contractor was here, and we talked about the scroll detailing old porch and the columns yeah. he was recreating, right? And Eric Court is here to talk about that. Wait, this is the old plat house. This is the plat home. Sure, yes. So you said plat street. It's across from the veterinary. WB plat. But it's Mr. Platt's house. Is it? Historic house. Okay. So based on that historic record from 79, it does show a picture in the front as well as I have pictures from Google Maps before they really started going in on the front, um, that pretty much the roof is the exact same roof that's been forever, or at least since 79 when this picture was taken. And they had no intentions of touching the roof. All they wanted to do was the columns and the bottom section, the top section, and I can pass this stuff around. So I don't know how the board wants to respond to this, res this resident. Um, so you're saying they haven't touched the roof? They have not all. touched not the roof at all. Right right now, the six by sixes are bracing it so it doesn't right. collapse down or fall down. And I, I know the contractor is working on restoring and replicating um, the columns. Um, seems to stop and start. Now there seems to be an army of ants crawling all over the house trying to finish up. It keeps coming and going, but it looks I'm, like it's underway. 
I can't address how somebody handles their finances or how yeah. they choose to run a, run a construction fire. site. I, I can only push it by that but what's, so being, what's being built is consistent with, with what we prepared, approved. As far as I can tell, everything that's coming before this board yeah, right. is consistent. Talk about any changes to the room. Uh, let's see. Acting Chairman John Clark inquired about the existing stairs. A long time So if you want to pass this down, I've highlighted the section of the minutes. That's uh, 6467, Montgomery. So was the uh, <coughs> letter addressed to the Dulling Department or to the... Uh... It was addressed to uh, numerous village officials. Um, it wasn't addressed to us because we didn't get caught. Not directly, no. no. It was more towards I mean, the code enforcement officer um, and also <laughs> trustee Slade. So. Uh oh. Well, it's consistent with what we approved and right. we're not uh -huh. touching it, so I don't think there's anything to say to the person other than that. Uh, okay, it follow us. Next time they make the point changes, we'll try to do it right. Can I ask a question? So, yeah, like I, I saw the pictures too, and so I, I'm not worried about this particular issue. But a house like that, that probably historically had a hipped roof on its front porch, but it no longer does at some point in its history. Um, like, how do you guys usually handle that? If, you know, I mean, it's sort of. Kind of like the shed roof with like a janky flashing off the side trying to disguise it. Um, and that's fine if that's how it's been since 1978. But like, how, how do you all usually sort of handle that? I know that we don't have architectural review unless someone's actually wanting to change an yeah. architectural feature. If they come in and want to leave things as it is and they're doing something else, we can't. Under the code, I don't think we can't make them change something that they're not touching. Right. We can encourage it, but there's nothing in the code that says, "Ah, oh, you're in now. We can make you do all these 34 things we always dreamed about." Right. Yeah. We do try to force them to fix the sidewalk. <laughs> we <laughs> touch well, it. You got to fix the sidewalk. <laughs> Steer. Right. Is that the only one? That's the only re the referral that I have. Oh, you um, have. June and July. So, so yes. Huh? That's a question. I, I think they just took off that maybe self patient. They took off the patient because they're repairing it. Okay. So it's not going to stay that way. Yeah, this no. is a photo. It's like raw lumber. Like some patient. Twenty yeah. from twenty twenty three. Yeah. This, this is one. Of, this is one of the um, elements we used for that meeting of August first, twenty twenty three. Right. This is part of it. And. Uh, you had a lot of questions about this, John, especially about this, uh, about this, about slashing here. But basically, they agreed to replicate the, exactly the historic architectural features of the porch in that meeting, August 1st, 2023. Okay. And we haven't seen it yet, but that's what they're proposed to do. They're still working. I on thought it. they did it and put the new ones up. Not 100% sure, but then they left. And it's like, you know, braced. Well, I, I thought I actually saw it where he had recreated them and looked like that, and they were up. But maybe it was like, you know, I took them back out because now they want to fix the, the decking, which is in bad shape. Oh, maybe. But this is going on forever. But, but, but there seems to be a lot of guys. All over the house with but to John's point, we haven't, they're, they're not done yet, and we don't have any evidence that they haven't um, complied with the, uh, what, what they agreed to do, and we approved. So the, the, the letter that someone wrote, were they objecting to the porch, or what? They were objecting specific to the roof, and they did mention the porch, um, I believe the phrasing was an Italianette porch was um, being planned for how this can turn, in, turn into. Um, that's the opinion of this, re this resident. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the, 
enforceable end or the compliance end because essentially they are restoring, replicating, putting back essentially what that is. So I don't know if he's saying that you guys should have done more of a job to make it more historically accurate. I have no idea. I just don't know how historically accurate you can make this house. Um, I mean, you got to go. You got to go. I guess farther back of what this could have looked like. Can we see the letter line? Or I mean, it sounds like you're talking about the roof, meaning like what's on top of. I can. But now it sounds like maybe you're talking about the trim elements on the porch. There was a combination of emails. I can circulate them to the board. Um, the first one, and then the one after, because they didn't get an answer right away, <laughs> and wanted a follow-up one. But to Jeff's point, also they're they're in process, so we don't know that they have or haven't done something. Yeah. Yeah. And I object to when anything is those trailers out there that have been there for three years or five years or yeah. something. And a dumpster. As I said, it stops and starts and stuff. The, 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 the dumpster, dumpster I, I, I don't know how, because, I mean, it is still under construction. Well, this, this room, this photo was from August of 2023. Yeah, I don't remember the dumpster being right. there, but the, the trailers have been there forever. For, for, yeah. Yes. And that shouldn't be allowed in the front yard yeah. forever. Well, I think they could argue, John, is it the front yard? Does it exceed past the front plane well, it's, it's, of the house? It's uh, within the setbacks, even, I think. I don't think that would have been approved. I, I don't know. I think, I think there's. Okay. We didn't approve any trails out there. No. You know, they've had temporary storage since they bought the house uh, five years ago. But is it temporary storage six months or something? We don't have a def definition of that. Well, the building department should work on that one. On the code, the new code. <laughs> the new code. Yeah. Okay. It's your next job. So, well, they're, uh, you know, I, I think they're, it looks like they're getting slowly close to the end here. There's a lot of guys but, on the um, the day, so. I, I, I don't think there should be a CO with those trailers on the property. <coughs> You have to clean up. Yes. What timing? <coughs> Come on down, Chuck. Just in time. Already? Is that the only thing to cut off? <coughs> That's the only referral I have, other than the other items under discussion. So we have pictures of this house. Is this again? 6363. Oh, the one behind the gas station. Yeah. You can't say it's beautiful. Chuck, you want to come up uh, the day later so we can see you and hear you? Sure. Over there. Right there. Yeah. And you're Chuck, you're Chuck Liscom. Correct. Hello. Thank you. Want to chat about it a bit? <laughs> So we have two documents that you provided for this meeting. That was one of them, and here's a consent form. Yeah, the uh, the building envelope is in very poor shape. Mm -hmm. uh, the interior is not too bad, but the exterior is in quite bad shape. The stairs. Um, he's looking. The siding is it's just wood. It's got drip knobbing, no sheathing. No insulation. What you'd like to do is take the siding off. It's pretty, it's deteriorated as you can see. Uh, and uh, remove the brick knobbing, insulate, uh, resheat it with plywood, and uh, use uh, hardy cement board in a, in a similar uh, clapboard fashion. Uh, windows, uh, we're going to replace all the single hung windows except for the arched windows. At the, at the peak there on the right. Uh, those are also single pane windows, but we, we elected to keep them and continue with the, they, they've got um, uh, a storm fitted to them. So we're just going to refurbish those. Um, 
that's pretty good, much shit on the exterior except the porches. Uh, the, I did it, I got some close ups. The wood porch decking is rotted. So I'm going to replace that in kind, uh, priming two coats of paint. The arched uh, trim, that's all going to be refurbished. Uh, none of that's, that's all going to stay. We're going to remo remove those stairs and replace them with the stairs of the width up to go match the columns and add handrails to the stairs. The railing, the, the porch is less than 30 inches, so it, it doesn't need handrails and we're not going to add them. We're just going to leave them as, as is. And uh, that's uh, pretty much on the exterior. That's, that's the extent of it. If you open up the wall for taking the siding off, now you open it up to the outside, you could, if you were going to have better heat and cooling, you could put any splits in and get the, the piping in inside the wall. If they don't want to do it, I'm not saying Piping on the wall? The, the line sets. Line sets for the mini splits to connect the outdoor. Oh, okay. I'm suggesting. Yeah. Because that's kind of the new technology. Okay, we're sure. Trying, yeah. We're trying to keep them so that when you do a major. To conceal the. the you conceal the piping, it okay. and you can screen them. Yeah, I, I understand that. Don't watch people look up a window units hanging out of the windows and then the, that the look is. Are they proposing new heating system? I'm sorry. Are they proposing a new heating system? Uh, no, she's. I think she's. Uh, she's looking at uh, a, a mini split systems. Right. Well, they should. Right now, it. right now, she's not planning to do anything as a part of this. She's exploring it. All right. Right now, there's, there's no air conditioning. There's a couple of uh, window units, and I know she was talking to a mechanical contractor. She's away right now. Is why I'm here. As well as why she's not here. Um, she's traveling, and if she gets back, that discussion is going to happen further. I would prefer to see them, so there's a little attic space for distribution of, of uh, the, the many splits. Not the wall hung units, we put, you know, pie them in the, in the attic and in the basement, and hopefully deliver from there. All right, Mike. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I think she wants to use a central system rather than uh, individual wall hung interior units. The point being is if, if you're going to do a heating system, it has to be on the site plan, if it's going to be on the exterior of the building. Okay. And well, <coughs> we would prefer the lines there. to be inside the house rather than attached to the outside of the house. I understand. We'll have that discussion when she gets back. If they decide not to do it until two years from now or whatever, they'll have to come well, back and yeah. have that those exterior, anything on the exterior approved. I'm sure that's her preference. She's put in a lot of money okay. to do this. I'm sure that's her her uh, preference as well, just to, to not have the pay all that. There was a mention about a gate across the opening. Yes. That's another thing, Chair, she's probably going to have to come back. So this conversation about the mini splits, you're probably going to have with her. Um, It'll be separate. It'll probably be either at the next meeting or a meeting in November because, yes, yeah, she's considering uh, some type of gate or, 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 or security feature to prevent uh, people from trespassing, which has been ha happening a lot uh, on the pro property. Is deciding not salvageable? Not really. It's just, I mean, I, I think that by the time it's taken off the building, it's also going to be in very bad shape. I mean, I hope you go out there and took a look at it, but where the boards butt, they're all frayed. I mean, could some of it be salvaged? But it's, it's all pine. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not cedar. Yeah. Um, and it's just in poor shape. So my expectation is that, um, by the, by, and also, you know, give a chance to put on new corner boards and, you know, clean up the, the exterior. <coughs> The, the intent is just pretty much to replace in kind, but with cement. Yeah. You know, it's, it's our preference that to see houses be fixed up rather than replaced. The siding repaired rather than replaced. Well, you can have that conversation with her. You know, you can have that conversation with her. I'm describing to you what her intent is. 
Yeah. And that's that, you know, and, and looking at it with us and the contractor, uh, it, it didn't look like it was feasible to pull all that siding and put it back. It's just. Does the brick not supply any R value? Yeah. Does the brick supply insulation? No. It does no, It's a little mass, so it might get a little bit of acid heating out of it after a sunny day or something, but not not. It doesn't keep the heat from coming out through the wall. It doesn't air seal well, but it, you well, know, it gives you an R of less than one. Is it less than one? A white of brick, huh? That's no, not. It, now it, it has you know thermal capacity. Right. It's exposed, but it's not exposed. It in right? It's inside the cavity, and it, 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 you know it was it stabilized the building. It was soundproofing. That's why there's no sheathing, which is another issue. Um, once we apply the sheathing, dimensions are going to change slightly, so the siding doesn't, everything follows, you know, it's, uh, I, I think that uh, that was the consensus of everybody, that the siding wasn't, wasn't feasible. It'll help us too in, you know, installing the windows, the new windows. I saw some time last week, some office we had that done, they were, they were taking off the side and they took off everything, and you saw la plaster coming through the last, Boxes of you know, electrical wires right like, you know, along it. They spray foam the whole thing, and then they put up she sheathing and then they put up clappers and what the she have tight. Well, does she doesn't. You know, at this point, uh, uh, she's willing to pay the, the, the cost of doing this because the heating costs are, are enormous. It was pretty cheap when this was built. All right, but our job is to make that house look like it's as, as old as it is. Right, so the, yeah, I know. The siding has to it's such, that's such a nice appearance on the street. Right. Well, I wish you could see it from the street. Yeah. Um, I mean, but the yeah, siding right. has to match exactly. The windows have to have exterior buttons so that they're they don't look like fake replacements. They look like the real windows. Well, what are the windows are like? Are nice, mostly like one over one. Well, I. So we, we've been recently faulted for not requiring enough detail on historic houses that okay. come to the board. So where we've gone most recently is we've asked just for a little more detailing on exactly what's being planned. In this case, if it's an exact recreation, I think some tight in photos. I was trying to say the cost of, I can draw all this and make models, but you know. Well, well, well let me, you know, I'm just gonna. I, I it, hopefully it's descriptive. Now, we can give you some middles on the windows. I know that I haven't, the contractor's getting the, the and there was a fellow out from Williams the other day, Mishri, and uh, they're, they're Marvin, uh, Marvin windows, I know that. And he was going out there and we said, uh, you know, match mountains on the windows, forget about the storms, they're coming off. And when we get that information, I can submit it, see the, yeah, I would probably be before they're ordered. You know, so, yeah, okay. you know, things that we require, right? Exterior grills. They're on hold. They're not. They're not doing anything. So we get planning board approval. Right. So what I'm suggesting is a, a major drawing of a lot of exterior details. I think it could be accomplished through cut sheets for the proposed windows. Sure. Some close-in photographs of some of the more important trim elements there. Um, just some some description about what the current siding reveals are, so that when the Hardy board goes up, it goes up in the same, you know, with the same exposure on the boards. Uh, we typically require the smooth side to be out to simulate more of an old platform rather than the, the middle grain. side. The yeah. Yeah, the, the, you can see the grain on this, obviously. No, the, the, the smooth side. You want to see the smooth side out? The smooth side, not the middle side. You got the, you got the middle side out here. Yeah. On now. We have a date you can on see the line. grain quite, quite prominently when you're close. It's not in Nancy Kelly's book, and then I went on Parcel Access, and it's in 1866. And it's on the 1867 map, it says B. Schultz. That's as far back as I was on Route 9, and the ones that are the oldest. I mean, they told me my house originally was 1865, and then 40 years later, Mike Frazier said, no, it's close to 1850, so. <laughs> and, you know, this this molding up here is very substantial and original. You know, that's something that we would want to preserve and not ripped off and replaced with something flat. You did that with Buddy Rogers' house. And 
It found only like this Y up there and it disappeared. Yeah, the point being is if you're going to change the windows or the siding, and we want more or less exact replicas so that it looks the same as if it was the historic fabric. And the moldings and the window frames are important. They should be preserved. Um, even though, you know, they... they I didn't know the level of preservation required here. Uh, I really didn't. All right. My, I, I know her intent is, is to uh, generally uh, put it back the way it was. But I will, we can photo document a lot of these items, uh, trim and, and the like in more detail. Yeah. And on eight and a half by 11s. And, and you should tell us what trim is staying and what, what trim is being replaced. That's much more important. If you say everything's being saved except for these three pieces, which are too far rotted, and we're going to replace them in command. That's the sort of information we need. Well, that, that except for the, the windows that have arched tops, and uh, some of the, uh, the rakes and eaves, which are in pretty good shape. And there was this, there's a few that aren't, but we placed them with wood and pine. Okay. But most of the rakes and eaves, and you know, we're going to leave them because they go like this. Yeah. They, you know, there's nothing straight on this well, building anymore. Of, they got in trouble with is uh, they want to come in. They're not going to straighten all that stuff out. No. No. Uh, but, but what we've got in trouble with is, is that the people want to replace the window, they go get a standard window and they change the, they take out the old trim or old framing because it doesn't fit the new window. And then it's, it's a different, if it's a different look. And so we want to keep all that old framing and, and uh, well, I understand. trim. Oh, well, but, yeah. So some photo documentation will help. Yeah, because the building inspector. To what the, the process, how you want to do Yeah. I will let her know. <clears throat> Because the building inspector will ultimately use that at the time of CO to determine that things were recreated. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, we've, we've seen that sometimes it's even just an innocent mistake on the part of a contractor. Someone who's on site on a particular day may assume and put a corner board mm -hmm. where there wasn't or something. Well, that's like we're not replacing any of that trim around the porch, anything that, you know, has any kind of real significance at all. That's being. For sure, but I'm noticing some of the barriers. It's right along the windows. Varies and reveals of the siding. Um, we mentioned break boards and things like that that could be impacted by just the sheathing, right? So there might be a decision made later to pull a break board or something because of the sheathing thickness. Could so be. we would, you know, a lack of or very petite corner boards in some of these areas um, just to have a baseline so that there's yeah. nothing to measure yeah. to later. Well, I know we mentioned the, the window, the, the column we're adding in a half inch of the framing for sheathing. Mm -hmm. So and we're going to do it section by section. This is the knobbing. It braces the building. It adds bracing to the building. Yeah, right. We're going to take all the pieces, insulate it, cover it up, and then when that's all done, as it's done inside, and it's reside each side, it's, it's going to be a process. No, so she she has like a good. ambitious project. So you'll come in at future meetings and talk about. Uh, the gate or any heating system changes or anything else that we haven't well, talked about. I know the gate, today. but she mentioned that to me. Um, she was talking about a sliding gate maybe or something. And um, uh, uh, what I recommended she do is a couple of fence gate companies around. Have them come out and, and discuss it with her. I, I told her that I think to me probably a, a pair of gates opening out towards the road would be the best thing. Uh, I'm not crazy about those big sliding gates. Yeah, and, uh, room, I would say they should open in. They should open in. Because if somebody parks outside the gate, then you can't open. Some, yeah. Whatever you decide, that's yeah. what, I'm, not, I'm not a gate guy, so right. I, I said, let talk to a gate company that has to give you their advice. Yeah, yeah. No, she brings in. So let's bring that as separate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not really. I don't think there's any gate like that in the village. So we, uh, uh, there's simplified. I think there's one on Chestnut Street, the old Frost House. Don't they have an automatic gate? There's no house on this. They take the, the exactly the 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 that. Exactly. Because of the amount of parking space. I saw it it's around it's somewhere park over park there. I don't think I've ever seen it close. Maybe it's coming. The new owner took it up, the previous owner had so it. So you'll be in touch with Ryan? 
on when you well, come I mean, back. You guys need to decide how you're acting tonight. Are you asking to table this and have uh, Chuck return at the next meeting with the items that Darren brought up about the trim and the windows and the, the siding detail? Yes. Or are you giving him a condition? All right. Yes. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. It's a board deal. <laughs> Administrative staff can't deal with it. No. I, I no. can't act okay. until they vote. Um, right. Some places do, some places don't. I understand that. I get it. Uh, so we're adjourned and you meet monthly, not every month? Every two weeks. Twice a month. Two months? Every no, 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 twice a month. Twice a month, great. Right. Okay. Back in the no, third Tuesday. I think she's getting back within the next week or so. Well, it's a bit of a Chuck, I'll, e I'll email you and Sue Park tomorrow. It's, it's October 15th. That's, okay. that's the next meeting. Yeah, I'm sure we can have something before the meeting and then be uh, there. And in order to be in the October 15th meeting, the deadline to present information is when? Uh, it's October 7th, but he's a continued application. Yeah. A little grace around there. Okay. Good. Thank, so you thank, thank you again for okay. getting here, Chuck. I, I, I apologize. I didn't, know, I didn't expect to walk away with <laughs> No, I told her that she's not here to speak to some nights, which is, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go over with her in detail. I'm sure she'll be here at the next meeting. Very good. Thank, thank you, Chuck. You. Thank, thank you. you. So we have two sets of AI minutes. We have three sets. So I don't I don't know exactly how the board wants to proceed with this. So from our discussion at the last meeting, I summarized I didn't summarize the program summarized the summary. <laughs> so we can go through um, this and see if this is something that the board is comfortable with, or if it's not enough, um, it's all up to you guys. You can take this home, and I, I, I've made five copies of, their, of, of the drafts. You guys can take a look at it and see if it's uh, if it needs still more work. And that's for which meeting, Ryan? This is for June fourth, June nineteenth, and July sixteenth. Oh. Okay, um, and you have the summaries we can take with us for each of them? So you guys have the first draft already. That was Just, very long. So this was, yes, that was the multiple pages one. This is still multiple pages, um, but it's definitely a more condensed version. If it's is, is it, is too there, much condensed, then... Is the thing learning, or are you teaching it? Uh, it's it's learning your guys' voices and things like that, um, and it's learning the topics and whatnot. Um, but yeah, but I, I leave it up to the board whatever you guys want to do tonight. I think I'd like to read them at the start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next time I don't read them. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk uh, about it in two weeks. That first version was way too long. Yes. So. Short one. enough or it's it's lacking um, 
the meat and potatoes, then you guys can fill in the meat and potatoes or add the meat and potatoes. All right. Actually, we can approve these at the next meeting. Yeah, this is July 16th. Sorry, sorry about that, John. I have that. Confused me. Because it's. I got all three of them. There's an extra one. Somebody's probably missing a set. I've got them all. I've got the June 4th, June 18th, and July 16th. Okay. So, I, just see. Just set. so do we want to review these and comment online, or do we want to uh, Ryan, can I bring our it? comments to the next meeting? I would, uh, I mean, these drafts, the drafts are, are, are up, uh, the, the really uh, Thick ones are already up, so there's really no change other than um, lines, page, paragraphs, page loads. So I think you guys can correspond over email about it because it's still in draft. You haven't voted on on Audrey, so they're still in draft form. Um, and then based on those comments for each draft, we can bring them. Next next time on October fifteenth, and then hopefully when, when you say they're up, are these up as draft at the village website? The draft draft one are up. Draft one are up. The long ones. The long Okay. 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 Motion to do. I second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. See you in two weeks.